Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at an Intel NUC. And believe it or not, we have never looked at a NUC here on the channel. And the reason why we're looking at this one is because it is brand new. This is their uh, NUC 6CAYS, and it's powered by uh, the new Intel Apollo Lake architecture. This one has the uh, J3455 quad-core chip. This is going to compare with uh, the Voyo V1 that we looked at about two weeks ago. This is a new version of Intel's low-powered chipset. We're going to be seeing a lot of these coming out uh, probably in this form as well as maybe in laptop form over the next several months. And we're going to see what uh, Intel's interpretation of this is. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I purchased this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a quick look at the hardware and then we'll boot it up and see what makes it tick. So uh, $215 is all this cost. You get two gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, and a Windows license. Again, it's got that uh, Apollo Lake J3455 uh, quad-core chip built in. You've got a bunch of USB ports on it, so you have two USB 3 ports here in the front, along with an analog headphone microphone adapter here and a power switch. Uh, you'll see what this uh, little light area does here when we boot it up in a second. On the back here, you've got some more stuff here. You've got two more USB 3.0 slots, uh, VGA out, HDMI out, gigabit ethernet, and an optical out on here also, which is great if you are doing some home theater stuff and need optical audio. Uh, you got it on here, although there is one gotcha on home theater that I'll uh, mention a little bit later. This is not fanless, although uh, it's probably one of the quieter fans that I have experienced on one of these little PCs. I could barely hear it even when it's under load, so I was very impressed that it doesn't make all that much noise, but unlike other uh, low-powered Intel devices, this one is not fanless, but again, you're not going to hear uh, that fan all that much. I did take this apart in my uh, extras channel uh, unboxing that I did the other day, so you can check that out and see what you can do to upgrade it and what it looks like inside. Uh, the bottom line is you can add a regular SATA hard drive. I was incorrect in saying that there was an M2 SATA slot on here also. There is not. Uh, so you can slide in a SATA SSD and upgrade the RAM. And what I did was bring this one up to uh, eight gigabytes of RAM by buying two four gigabyte modules. Uh, that actually improves performance. I'm gonna cover that a little bit later in the review, but I would suggest if you are serious about using this as a personal computer or as a home theater device that you may wanna go for that dual channel uh, RAM to get better graphics performance on it and a little bit of boost in other areas too. Now you will notice here on the top that there are some slots here to pry off this top cover, which you can do and uh, Intel has done this so that you can design your own cover for it. So you, they give you uh, 3D printing plans on their website that you can use to uh, make your own. So if you wanted to maybe put some hardware up top here that you can make a larger uh, cap for it or just do something logoed or something like that. So they're giving some uh, OEMs the ability to do some modification to the top of the case to add uh, capacity to their own PCs. And one last thing, you're probably wondering why there is a yellow uh, USB slot on here. And that is because this is always provided power even when the system is off. So if you want to charge your phone or something, uh, you can do it on there. And I almost forgot that there is an SD card slot here on the side too, so you can get your camera cards uh, plugged in there as well. And of course, lock it down on a desk with a Kensington lock. So that is the overall hardware design. Now what I'm going to do is hook it up and boot it up and we'll see how it performs. All right, so we got everything booted up here. Now you're going to notice the front of this is blinking. That is the disk activity light and it might uh, throw you off a little bit. So if that is bothering you, I think you can disable it in the BIOS. But whenever the disk is going, you're going to see that thing flashing at you. And it was uh, a little disconcerting when I first booted it up to see that thing just pulsating at me. I thought there was something wrong with it, but that is uh, normal behavior. So I do want to show you its YouTube performance. And like what we saw in the Voya with these new Apollo Lake chips, it really is a pretty zippy uh, little device when you're browsing the web and watching online video and whatnot. So I'm going to uh, just boost this video up to 1080p 60 and uh, pull up the stats for nerds so we can see if we're dropping any frames. I did see like one drop frame when it booted up, but it seems like it's performing about where that uh, other Voyo PC did with the Apollo Lake architecture and able to play back these videos uh, without any issue. And we can also go over to nasa.gov here and just see how it does browsing the web as well. So I think just overall, this is a uh, really nice new platform from Intel that is relatively low powered yet uh, is delivering performance that we saw out of PCs that consumed a lot more power just a couple of years ago. So we're getting a really good um, experience here while uh, reducing the overall power footprint. And on the Octane benchmark test, we got a score of 10,300 
2,869 with one RAM module installed and 11,116 with two modules installed. So a little faster when you've got that second RAM module built in. I did find it surprising though that the uh, Voyo did a little bit better. That one got a score of 12,302. I'm not sure why that is, but it did do better on this test. On the other tests we will do with some gaming in a minute, you'll see this one performs a little faster, but uh, to my eye it looks about the same. And you'll also notice on that Octane test that the HP Stream Mini, which was a about a $180 PC from uh, maybe two or three years ago that had a higher powered Intel chip on there, uh, performs about the same as this one does, but this one consumes a lot less power. And in Microsoft Word, using our regular newsletter template here, you can see it is uh, keeping up well and rendering a pretty complex document uh, very quick and efficiently. And again, a lot faster than what we saw with some of these similar class PCs from the prior generation chipset. All right, with some work out of the way, let's take a look at some gaming now. And as we always do, we like to look at Minecraft and we're getting a really decent performance here on the Java version of Minecraft, well above 30 frames per second, occasionally uh, hopping into the 60 frames per second territory, but generally I would say in the 40s or so. Uh, not bad and on par with other Apollo Lake chips that we've seen. And uh, that's where these little mini PCs really shine is in things like emulation and uh, Minecraft and other casual games like it. Let's take a look at something a little bit more demanding, Counter-Strike. Go. All right, so here we are in Counter-Strike Go. I'm going to try to get some 1080p performance out of this so you can see what our settings are here with everything kind of turned all the way down. And as I back out of the menu, we'll go out to the game here. We're getting about uh, actually 30 frames per second here uh, with the settings turned way down. I am running through a scaler, so it might look a little wacky uh, on screen for you, but this gives you an idea as to the frame rate you can expect to get if you uh, turn everything way down. Now remember, this is with the dual channel memory, and this is where I want to bring up this discussion because uh, when I had only a single channel of memory installed, just one uh, chip, it was getting uh, less performance than I'm getting now because of adding that uh, second module of RAM. So this runs on DDR3 RAM, the low voltage laptop type RAM. And I want to show you a benchmark I did uh, with 3D Mark, their CloudGate benchmark that we typically look at. Now with one channel of, of memory installed, uh, we got a score of 2,493 on that test. Uh, frame rates on our first graphic test around 11 frames per second, on the second test around 12 frames per second. Uh, when I installed the second module, you can see how much faster it is. We pick up uh, seven or eight frames per second on that first test and about four or five on the second one, and uh, we get a score of 3,256. So adding that second RAM module really lets the uh, graphics, uh, internal graphics of the Apollo Lake chipset uh, really do its thing. And we're able to actually play some games at uh, somewhat playable frame rates here. Uh, to put it in comparison, that Voyo V1, the Apollo Lake uh, machine that we looked at two weeks ago, uh, that one performed about where uh, the single channel version of what we're looking at here performed at. So you can see just adding that second module and adding another channel of RAM uh, really makes a big difference here. And it's really fun to see how emulation has been improving on these low end chips as well because they are getting more powerful. And uh, here we are running Wave Race on the Dolphin emulator and it's running at full speed. Uh, not all GameCube games will run at full speed, mind you, but uh, the Mario game seems to run okay, Mario Sunshine. I was able to play uh, Star Wars Rogue Leader, although that one ran about 20% below its uh, full speed rating there. So your mileage will vary a bit on these, but uh, really cool to see that you can buy a $200 PC and have it uh, really run the gamut of uh, old game consoles and emulation, even things as demanding as the GameCube might be. Now I did hook it up to my home theater system earlier and had some decent experiences with it on my 4K television. Uh, the good news with these new processors is that they support uh, 60 hertz at 4K. So my screen looks great. I was able to load up Kodi and get my Blu-ray MKV files playing back just fine. Uh, HEVC at 4K also worked well, so it covered all the bases there. Uh, the one caveat though was that it did not support the lossless DTS HD audio format. I could do the uh, lower tier audio formats, but not the lossless ones, which was a disappointment. That seems to me to be a driver licensing issue, so I'm not sure if I have to buy a license to make it work, but uh, for something that I would love to use as a home theater box, unfortunately, it did not uh, check that box, but uh, it did just about everything else on there. So not bad on the home theater side, but uh, they've got to get support for those lossless formats. I did do a BIOS update before I did all the testing here. Uh, wasn't on there, so if you know of anything I should be looking at, uh, do let me know down below in the video description or comments, and I did uh, definitely set my Kodi up the right way, so definitely let me know what you can help with. I also just wanted to briefly show you the BIOS here. They've got a nice uh, graphical user interface for the BIOS, so you've got your uh, performance monitor here when you log in, and you can uh, 
step through all of the uh, specific system information that you're looking for. And you can also go into the advanced screen here and uh, do some more granular configuration. I didn't see any real options to uh, do any kind of overclocking or that kind of thing on it. So I don't know if there is something to unlock that you can get into those settings, but uh, there are some uh, more granular kinds of settings here for the video configuration, for example, as well as your uh, SATA and USB devices here. So you do have the ability to do some uh, configuration of the system overall and a really nice interface to uh, go along with that as well that is mouse driven as well. So good stuff there from uh, Intel on their new Apollo Lake NUC. And I am very impressed with uh, where Intel has taken processors. These are very low powered chips yet are delivering some performance that we saw out of more powerful devices only two years ago. And this is what's really cool to see this out of a $200 PC that uh, you can pretty much buy out of the box and get up and running. Although I do recommend putting in those RAM chips to uh, give you the dual channel performance, especially for things that are graphically intensive, like the games that we looked at, uh, which will give you better gaming performance and maybe even improve things a bit on the home theater side as well, uh, just because it's flowing data through its I.O. a little quicker with that added RAM uh, channel to the mix. So that is the new NUC, the Apollo Lake NUC from Intel, and this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.